Hi, and welcome to Module 2 of Video Lecture 4. In this module, we're going to cover the first of the three rules of differentiation that we're going to talk about in this course. This one is that the derivative is a linear operator. Now, what does that mean? Turns out we've already seen something very similar before when we discussed linear functions back in, in Lecture 2. So let's recall what a linear function is. It's a function that satisfies two conditions. One, we called additivity. That meant if you have a function that's a function of two variables, we can separate out the function like this. The second one was scaling. If we have a function of a variable multiplied by a constant, we can pull out the constant. And we said such functions looked somewhat like this. That was a linear function. How does this relate to linear operators? Well, pretty much the same way. If you have some operator L, and it's operating on two functions, then you can split it up like this. Similarly, if the, if the operator is operating on some constant times a function, you can pull out the constant. How does this relate to derivatives? Well, you place the L there with the derivative. So if L equals d by dx, then you're done. Those two rules there with the d by dx are exactly the rules the rule that the, linear, that the derivative is a linear operator. So more specifically, we know that if we take f plus g, and they're both functions of x, and we use the shorthand prime, remember we did the shorthands in the previous, mod, in the previous lecture, that's going to equal f plus g prime. Or if we have some constant c times f, Take the prime, that's equal to c times f prime. And that's it. Those are the two parts of it. You can put them together if you want to and show that, and I use the d by dx notation instead, if you have a constant a and a function f plus a constant b times a function g, this thing is equal to a df over dx plus b dg over dx. And there you go. So you can split up a long sum into component parts using this rule that the derivative is a linear operator. And this rule um, brings into itself two, sometimes you hear rules given separately, the addition rule and the subtraction rule. Well, this is clearly a rule for addition. And if you make b negative, it's clearly a rule for subtraction. So it's the same rule, right? The only real rule here is that the derivative is a linear operator. All those splintered rules are just not really worth memorizing. If you understand that you can do this kind of thing with the derivative, that it behaves just like any other linear function, in a sense, a linear operator, then you can do anything you want with any, amount of, any sums, any differences, any combination of sums and differences. They all obey this exact same rule and it makes life much easier for you. We'll go through a couple of examples of that. Um, but first, where did this rule come from? Well, it turns out you can get it pretty easily from the definition. Recall the definition of a derivative was this. Okay. Let me get a little clearer. So you have, you look at the difference between the function evaluated at x plus h and the function evaluated at x divided by the difference itself as the difference gets smaller and smaller and smaller. That ratio at the secant becomes a tangent, remember, from the last lecture, is going to be your derivative at the point x. What if we had two functions there? Well, let's see. What if your big function was actually this? 
Well, you'd evaluate it at x plus h, and you subtract the evaluation at x, and here'd be a big function, and you divide by h and take a limit. Well, if I take this term and put them together, and then take this term and put them together, right, what do I get? Well, remembering that the, the limit doesn't care what the order is at all, you get f of x plus h minus f of x over h plus g of x plus h minus g of x over h. The limit of both. What does that mean? That means the derivative of f plus g, which is that first thing that we did, is equal to the derivative of f plus the derivative of g, which is the second thing we did. And there you go. That already is half of the rule. We can do the other half. Let's say we have a function that has, that's a constant times the function itself. We want to take that derivative. Well, again, it's the limit as h goes to 0 of c evaluate times f evaluated at x plus h minus c times f of x divided by h. Well, c is a constant. It occurs on both terms in the, in the numerator. We can pull it out, and we get the limit of h to go to 0. c times this. That thing in the brackets is the derivative. Recalling that the limit of a constant is just the constant itself. And recalling that the limit of a times b is the limit of a times the limit of b. We talked about that back in lecture two. We can pull that whole thing out and just get if this or this thing is this. We again have our rule. And that's it. That's where they come from. There's nothing mysterious, nothing too fancy about this. It just, because the derivative has a bunch of terms in the numerator that it subtracts, if you add more terms in there or multiply them all by the same constant, you can pull them apart, and they still um, behave like derivatives. And that's it. There's nothing else going on here. With this rule, we can split apart any sum, as we were saying, into a small number of discrete derivatives. How does that work? Well give a couple of examples. We can't do many examples yet because we don't have any real derivatives, right? We just have a couple from the previous part. Let's do um, a couple. If you recall from the previous lecture that if f equals x squared, then the derivative of that is 2x. And if f equals x, then the derivative of that equals 1. And if f equals any constant c, the derivative of the constant equals 0. And this is stuff we did in the previous lecture as examples from the definition of the derivative. What do we do with that? Well, what if instead f actually equaled x squared plus x? We could go back and plug it all the way back into the definition of the derivative and do it again, and that would work. So if you want to try that, by all means, go ahead. Um, but with this rule, we don't have to. We know the derivative of f prime here, sorry, the derivative of f, which is f prime, is going to equal the derivative of this thing, which equals the derivative of x squared dx plus the derivative of x dx. We said this thing over here is going to equal 2x, and we said this thing over here was going to equal 1, and we're done. That's the derivative. We separated out the full sum into two pieces, took the derivative of each separately, and added them. That's it. Nothing fancy at all. We can do other things like this. What if instead f equaled, let's say, x squared say 3x squared minus 7. Well, again, the derivative is going to be taken by taking the derivative of each part separately. 
Well, so at first, a derivative of the first term, then minus the derivative of the second term in this case. This derivative over here is zero because it's a constant. That leaves just this one. Now we don't quite know how to solve it, except we can again apply the same rule iteratively. This is going to equal, here's a constant, right? This three is a constant, so I can pull it out by the same linear rule to get three times the derivative of x squared. We just said that's two x, so it's three times two x or six x. We can apply these rules as much as we want, iteratively, again and again, boiling down our sum and product with constants to smaller and smaller values until we actually know how to do the smaller smaller derivatives. And as we'll see at the end of this module, that's all we're going to be doing. We're going to be using these rules to split apart our complicated derivatives into small manageable pieces that we know immediately the answer to. And once we get to the point at which we can do that, it'll turn out derivatives are actually pretty straightforward to take. You got to be careful to make sure you, you don't lose pieces, right? It's a lot of bookkeeping effectively and keeping track of all the pieces. And there'll be some algebra to move around things and simplify things. But fundamentally, all we're going to do is take a complicated derivative and split it up into small component pieces, take the derivative of the small pieces, and then put it all back together. The actual differentiation we're going to do will not end up being that complex. Okay. And that's it for this module. Um, and the next one, we'll do our first example of a derivative of a polynomial. Thank you.